So yeah, AMD's new Ryzen AI 9 HX 370 APU is packing the most powerful iGPU that we've seen so far. It's based on RDNA 3.5. We've also got more CUs than we've seen before, going up to 16. And through my testing, this is definitely putting down some amazing performance. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new ZenBook S16 from ASUS. And I'll tell you, the main reason I wanted to get my hands on this is because it's got AMD's new Ryzen AI chip. In fact, the one that we're taking a look at in this video today has the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. Definitely a mouthful, but what makes this chip special is the fact that it's actually upgraded from Zen 4 to Zen 5. But in my opinion, that's not the most exciting thing. The most exciting thing here is the fact that we've got a brand new iGPU based on RDNA 3.5. More CUs coming in with 16 and a clock up to 2900 megahertz, making it the most powerful iGPU that AMD has ever released. And ASUS went ahead and threw it in the ZenBook S16. This is a brand new design and it is an absolutely beautiful laptop. We've got an OLED display up to 120 hertz, Chassis is constructed of their brand new ceramic aluminum material, making it super light, actually coming in at 3.3 pounds. And the design here is really nice. I mean, it's got a good feel to it. It's definitely a premium laptop coming in their ZenBook line. So this is from their ZenBook S line. They also make a ZenBook Pro line. And construction here is top notch. Now inside of the box, along with the new ZenBook S16, what we're gonna get is the ASUS Pen 2.0 does have an OLED touch display here, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. They've also thrown in an Ethernet adapter because it is absent on this super thin laptop. And of course, we've got our charger, which is their brand new super slim 65 watt PD charger for this unit. And of course, a USB type C charging cable. Taking a look at the overall unit, the trackpad here is awesome. It's actually 40% larger than most of the other laptops on the market at the same size. Also have built-in gestures like volume control, brightness control, and media control. Fully backlit, chiclet style keyboard with 1.1 millimeter of travel. And besides the brand new Ryzen AI chip, the main claim to fame for this new ZenBook S16 has to be the display. These OLEDs are some of my favorite displays on the market. I mean, out of anything that I've ever used or seen, I absolutely love the color saturation. And given that we've got a 120 hertz refresh rate, with a 0.2 second response time, in my opinion, makes it one of the best OLEDs on the market for these laptops. It's 100% DCI-P3, 133% sRGB, which means it's gonna be a little oversaturated. Personally, that's kind of my favorite. Again, 120 hertz, 0.2 millisecond response time, up to 600 nits of brightness, and it does support display HDR True Black 500 and 600. It's fully certified. So yeah, it's a really good looking display. And this trackpad here is massive, 40% larger than most of the other ones on the market. We've got those built-in gestures like volume control, brightness control, and media control up top. For a super thin laptop, keyboard is feeling pretty nice with that 1.1 millimeter of travel. And we've also got that co-pilot button if you're into it. And of course, AMD has branded these new chips as Ryzen AI. This definitely does have a brand new NPU, up to 50 tops or 80 tops total performance. Taking a look at the overall I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got a full-size HDMI port, dual USB 4 ports, both of these are 40 gig, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right-hand side, full-size SD 4.0 card reader, and a single full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. And when it comes to the overall specs, ASUS is offering this in a couple different variants, but the one we have here has that brand new AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370. With this, we get 12 cores, 24 threads, 4 Zen 5 cores, and 8 Zen 5C cores, so those are the efficiency cores. Base clock of 2 GHz with a boost up to 5.1. XDNA NPU up to 50 tops. Or if we combine all of the functionality from the iGPU, CPU, and the NPU up to 80 tops of AI performance. And of course, we've got that brand new AMD Radeon 890M iGPU. This is based on RDNA 3.5. We've got 16 compute units up to 2900 megahertz. And this is all paired up with 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM running at 7500 megahertz. One M.2 NVMe PCIe 4.0 SSD. 120 hertz, 3K OLED display. So we've got a resolution of 2880 by 1800, and it is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, 
a 78 watt hour battery, and the whole unit is coming in at 3.31 pounds. I mean, it's pretty light for what we've got here. Windows 11 Pro on this machine, and this display does have some really cool features built in. So if we head into our display settings, you can see we've got a bunch here. We can wake my device when I approach, and we can set up how far away. So we can go up to four feet, and I actually didn't know that this feature was here. Every time I stepped away from this thing, the screen would dim on it, and I wasn't sure what was going on until I looked into the settings. I think this is actually really cool. With features like this, they can really optimize that battery performance. And getting right into our task manager, We've got that brand new Zen 5 CPU. This is something I've been really excited about. 12 cores, 24 threads. And I have allocated 8 gigs of VRAM to the iGPU from the BIOS. So it's showing up as 24 now because we've got 8 dedicated to that new Radeon 880M iGPU. In order to get a better look at everything, performance settings and things like that, I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my game capture so we can just see everything a bit closer. Now there are some performance profiles directly from my ASUS that allow us to get better performance out of this or better battery life. From our device settings, battery care mode, we can set this up to only charge to 80%. It'll definitely help out with the overall life of the battery itself, but you're gonna be stuck at 80% charges with that on. You can enable it if you want to. But moving down to our fan profile. Now this is really our performance profile. Whisper mode, obviously gonna keep that fan nice and quiet. Also lower that TDP. Standard mode, performance mode, which a lot of people would probably run like this, especially when you're plugged into power. And finally, full speed mode. With full speed mode, it doesn't mean that the fan is going to be running at 100% all the time. It's just a more aggressive fan curve, and that TDP is up as high as we can go in this system right now. And just to give you a look at that, CPU package power is listed here with hardware info. We'll go ahead and run a stress test with CPU Z, and you'll see it jump up quite a bit, but it comes down quickly. In full speed mode, we've got a sustained of around 35 watts, a little under, we go to 33 every once in a while, boost up to that 55, but that's only for a few seconds. And in performance mode, it's got a 28 watt TDP. I know for a fact with the 370HX, we can get more out of this chip with higher TDPs. And I've got another laptop I will be testing on the channel very shortly, but we're gonna go ahead and check out what this thing can do. And the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this system. And remember, with all of these tests, I am in full speed mode from my ASUS. Geekbench 6, this is looking really impressive here. Single core, 2,882. Multi, 15,076. I can just imagine this thing running at a 65 watt TDP. Love to see what we can do there. Again, stay tuned to the channel. Next up, we've got Cinebench R23, 19,000. 302. And the final benchmarks I ran were GPU benchmarks for that brand new Radeon RDNA 3.5 890M, Night Raid with a 34,964. And just to give you an idea, on the 780M, we're around 28,000 with this, even at higher TDPs. And the final thing we've got here is Time Spy. Over 4,000 on this new RDNA 3.5i GPU. In fact, 4,063. Just taking a look at these synthetic benchmarks on that new iGPU, we've definitely got a nice little uplift over the 780M, and it really comes down to having those extra CUs or those extra compute units. Remember, we had 12 in the 780M. We're working with 16 here, so let's get into some real-world gaming. Starting off a bit light here with Overwatch 2, we're at 1080p high settings with no resolution scale. I'm seeing an average of around 109 FPS out of this game. And of course, with a little bit of tweaking, we could probably go ahead and lock this at 120. Now I will admit, drivers I'm using right now are a bit early. You know, as soon as this officially launches, we will see some updates. And I'm not sure if we're gonna get a major bump in performance right now, but I know down the road that we can see some optimizations from AMD here. Taking a look at something a bit harder to run, medium settings, 1080p, AMD frame gen on from the game settings, but we're not using FSR. On the 780M, I do have to set FSR to balance to see this kind of performance. And it's definitely about the same, but we don't have to scale this image at all. We're at a true 1080p with frame gen. I will have a full comparison video coming up because you know a lot of devices are using that 780M. Even something like that Ryzen Z1 Extreme, it's basically the same iGPU as that 780M, 12 CUs, 
Given that we've got more here, of course, we will need to throw a little more power at this chip, but it is performing much better so far. Lord Sakai. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I know it's an older one, but this is one I always like to benchmark with these AMD iGPUs, and this is definitely some of the best performance that I've seen so far. We're at 1080p, low settings, with no fidelity cast. That's something we usually have to enable to get this kind of a frame rate. And even then, with it set at about 70% on that 780M, we're not seeing the averages that we're seeing here with this new 890M. Because at the end of this benchmark, we had an average of 85 FPS. All right, so here's Forza Horizon 5, high settings, 1080p, Ray tracing off, that's something I don't enable when I'm at high settings on these iGPUs. We're not using FSR, we're not using any kind of fidelity cast, and I'm actually seeing around a 32 FPS increase over the 780M with this game. Now it does fluctuate a bit here, and I do think it has to do with optimizations, but with this new iGPU with the correct TDP, I don't think it's gonna be an issue to lock this game down at high 1080, 120 FPS. I had to test out Fallout 4 here. We're at 1080 high settings, and I'm seeing an average of around 92 FPS. Usually, I do just play this at 60 FPS, so there's a chance we could just go to Ultra and lock this right down at 60. Looking pretty good here, and it's handling it just fine. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. This is the same exact settings that I use with the 780M on all of the systems that we benchmark. 1080p, low settings, FSR set to performance. And the reason I did this is because I've got a good feeling of what we see on that 780M. And on a good day, it's around 68 to 69 FPS, even at a 65 watt TDP. But on this system here, running at that continuous of around 35, we had an average of 80 FPS out of this system. So yeah, these extra CUs with this new 890M RDNA 3.5i GPU are really helping out. And I think we can definitely tweak and tune this little system here or even another one with a very similar chip and see even better performance out of all of the games we've tested. And so when it comes down to it, AMD's new Ryzen AI chips are really packing some power, even at those lower wattages. But of course, there is more that we can get out of this chip. So definitely stay tuned to the channel. When it comes to this laptop in particular, personally love the display here. Again, I'm just a big fan of these OLEDs. These oversized trackpads are something I love to see in these laptops, and having those gestures comes in really handy. The new ceramic aluminum material that they're using here definitely looks and feels premium. I think ASUS has done a really good job with their new ZenBook S16, and if you're interested in learning a little more about this, I'll leave some links in the description. But keep an eye on the channel because I will have more videos with that Radeon 890M iGPU. That's something I'm super interested in, and I'd love to push this thing to its limits. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.